a very good morning to all so in the previous class we discussed about the constitution of india preamble and the six fundamental rights that are guaranteed by the constitution of india to all the citizens of the country today we'll continue from page number 97 and we'll be discussing about the fundamental duties so the constitution of india along with some fundamental rights it has also guaranteed us some fundamental duties so what do you understand by duty a duty is something that someone is expected or required to do for example a teacher has a duty to educate students and it's your right to get the education so both rights and duties works hand in hand so our constitution of india has provided us with some fundamental duties now let's discuss them so the first one is respect our constitution so you all know that constitution is a set of rules that guides how a country should be governed or should be ruled and this also gives us some rights and duties to all the citizens for the better living so we should obey these rules and we should respect our constitution of india next one is respect our national flag and national anthem as you all know that india was ruled by british for many many years and after long and hard struggle our country got its freedom on 15th august 1947 so we should remember the sacrifices given by the freedom fighters and this national flag is a symbol of sacrifice so we should always respect the national flag and the next one is national anthem it's a song of our country and this song always praise our country so whenever we hoist the national flag or whenever we sing the national anthem we should stand in attention position so this is the way to respect our national flag and national anthem next one is we must respect the diversity of our country so india is a vast country with lots of diversities different people live here they practice different religion they have different tradition they speak different language they wear different dress so lot many differences so despite of these differences we should treat everyone equally now the next fundamental duty is help the government in the crisis so we must always help and support the government in natural crisis like war a threat to public health or some financial crisis or during some spread of diseases so nowadays we are going through such situation and we should help and support the government next one is protect and preserve our environment so here it is the duty of every citizen to protect and preserve our natural environment which includes forest river lakes wildlife and we should have a compassion to these living creatures now the next fundamental duty is do not damage public property so public property is a property that is given by the government to be used by the public for example railways buses roads parks museum telephone exchange and many more public properties so we should not damage these public properties next fundamental duty is treat all equally so you all know that there are lots of differences in our country different people live in different states they have their own religion they have their own festivals their tradition and their cultures are different so despite of these differences we should treat everyone equal and we should also follow non violence that is if there is any dispute among the people then they should solve it by words and not by using weapons or they should not fight so 
this was about the fundamental duties that are by the constitution of India. Now next topic is directive principles of state policy. Before that you can see in page number 97 let's talk about. So the question is you are visiting the famous red fort in Delhi with your family. You notice that a group of boys are damaging the beautiful fort by writing their names on the walls and destroying the gardens while running around. So you have to say are they doing the right thing? What would you tell them? So this is an activity you have to write the answer in your notebook and submit in Microsoft Teams. Now let us move on to page number 98 and the topic is directive principles of state policy. So you all know that there are many laws and regulations in our country for the better running of our country. So according to the changing time we need to make new laws and amend older ones. So amend means to make small changes in the laws which are already present. So how the government make these new laws? So there is a special section in the constitution of India and this is known as the directive principles of state policy. So here you can say that directive principles of state policy are the guidelines which helps the government to govern the country and also to make sure the welfare of the people of the country. So while making new laws the government follow these guidelines that is the directive principles of state policy. So here in page number 98 you can see some of the directive principles are given. So the first one is promotion of justice on a basis of equal opportunity. So while making law the government makes sure that it is according to the promotion of justice on a basis of equal opportunity. That means that all citizens whether men or women have the right to work, they have the right to earn their living and they should be given equal opportunity to work and there should be equal payment for equal work for both men and women. So there should not be any differences between men and women, instead they should be treated equally. So this was about the directive principle of state policy that is promotion of justice on a basis of equal opportunity. Now the next one is free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14. So there are children from poor economic background who cannot afford their education. So in India there are few laws which states that to provide free and compulsory education for the children up to the age of 14. So this was about the directive principle of state policy that is free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14. Now the next one is promotion of education and economic interest of the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes and other weakened sections. So here economic means related to business or industry or trading and trade means selling and buying of the goods. This means that help should be given to the backward and the weaker section of the society so that they improve educationally and economically because these backward or weaker section people do not have enough means to get proper education and proper work. So while making the laws the government always keeps them in mind so that they can have a better living. So these are few directive principles of state policies. Other than this there are many other directive principles of state policy and some of them are the environment, forest and wildlife of the country should be preserved and protected. So whenever the government is making some laws they have to keep these things in mind. Next one is monuments, places and objects of history should be protected. 
another one is nutrition and public health for indian citizens should be improved so these are few extra directive principles which are not given in your textbook so in this class we discussed about the fundamental duties and the directive principles of state policy that's all for today we'll meet in the next class thank you mm -hmm.